The views and opinions expressed by the guests and contributors on Conklin and Company are not necessarily those of 13 ABC. Now, Conklin and Company continues with Take Three, commentary and analysis from our panel of political contributors. Welcome back, everyone. Boy, has a lot happened in the last month when you're talking about the water crisis that was in Toledo and what has happened since. Because of that, we haven't had Take Three on for a month. So now we have so much to talk about. And we welcome in Keith Burris of the Toledo Blade. Good, great to have you here this morning, Keith. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Good to be and here. And Skylar Meadows, a, a wily veteran of Take Three right. from uh, Juice 107.3. Congratulations to Skylar on your 10th anniversary of your talk show. Greetings. Right. Thank you. Yeah, you had a, a heck of a guest uh, lineup, uh, I know, when you celebrated a couple of weeks ago. It was you. Yeah, you first. Right. Opposite this program, right. how about that? And then we had the water crisis as well, so yeah. everything's kind of been geared to that. Now we're all back on track. Back on track, and we're in two segments today because there is so much to talk about. But as we, you're here be, because of the water crisis, too, we haven't had take three, but we have to talk about what has happened and what, what will happen going forward. And, Keith, I'll, I'll start with you. You've written extensively about this. Uh, and we've had changes at the top. There was a call for, for change, and there have been changes. Mm -hmm. The water treatment plant, Mr. Leffler's in place now, Mr. Henry is in place. We've had changes there, and at the administration level, too, with uh, the public information officers. Mm -hmm. We have a new person on board now. Now, your take on the changes since what happened one month ago this weekend? Well, I think uh, from what I've heard from people and, and been able to gather, Mr. Henry will be very helpful um, to them there. Um, I think, to me, an even bigger issue than the plant and the facilities um, are, is what's the quality of the personnel over there? Do we have enough expertise? We still really don't know from the night that this all went down. Um, do we have adequate personnel and expertise in, in, in the water plant? So uh, I think that's the, the big question that remains. And then um, maybe there's still need for change at the top. At the, so. at the top, we've already changed uh, who's overseeing the yeah. plan, Warren Henry and Leffler as well. He's in place now. Yeah. What do you mean at the top? Well, I mean uh, the mayor's um, top staff, his cabinet, the chief of staff. Um, somebody's got to own the problem with Ohio EPA and, and uh, what happened with the Collins administration. You know, they got into a bad situation with each other, and that's part of why we had the, the crisis. Yeah. Um, and Skylar, we know all about, pardon me, uh, Keith, you know all about that letter. Right. right from Keith Butler at the Ohio EPA um, and, and Ed Moore's responded to that so yeah we've you know we've tried to work out those differences and mm -hmm. speak to that maybe that's interesting that Keith says that though that somebody has to be held responsible because the mayor is not really taking full accountability he's saying you know the city is moving forward the water quality is great we can drink it we are changing things going forward but you haven't really heard like the circle with the red pen moment where you can say there is a specific person and I'm not implying that heads should roll I think that this might be a good move but then again if you have a micromanager you can't do what you mm. what you need to do the second piece is that back to the water treatment plant we need more than a scientist in charge no disrespect to the people, but they're qualified because of their scientific background. Okay, so who's the leader overall that's going to lead? Keith, uh, do you know a science, scientist who's in charge over there? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone does. At Collins Park? And I think, um, I think you're right. I think there needs to be a political officer in charge. If it's not the mayor, it should be the chief of staff. I don't think... But Rob, Bob Reinbold will be out of all... This was supposed to be a one-year deal for it's Bob Reinbold, correct? It's supposed to be a one-year deal, and if that's the case, he's three-fourths of the way through. So um, it seems to me there's a need for sort of grown-up um, adult leadership in the, in the mayor's office, and it should start with a meeting with Ohio EPA. Sit down together, work out your differences, get a working relationship and I'd feel better, as you say, if the, if the mayor said, you know, it's on, it's on me. I'm, I'm the person responsible for this going wrong. And you don't feel that he said that? He kind of directed things in this so. and that direction? I mean, he, he said, I wouldn't let my family drink the water, so I'm not going to let you drink the water. And he made very judicious decisions there. But no, I don't hear any specific ownership. And I don't think a shift or division of jobs is going to help either. Like, for instance, public information officer and executive assistant has been split now. That's not going to help. But we need a fearless leader at the top of all that is water to mm -hmm. be in charge, take control, and report to the mayor and restore confidence. Yeah. People do not feel confident about the water. Yeah, that's you, a key point. Still a, a month later, 
uh, and, and all that talk about false positives and what have you. So, so here we are a month later, but not a lot of confidence yet. Despite the fact all the money's been out, the money's been allocated now to improve this plan, right. to over, completely overhaul this plan. I think the public doesn't have confidence because they've never gotten kind of a full explanation of what happened. And here, here's the resolution. Here's what we've learned. Here's what we're going to do going forward. I'm sitting down with Ohio EPA next week, and we're going to work this out. Here's, here's what we're asking the Congress people to do about the lake. Um, I don't. I think folks don't feel confident. They're going out and buying bottled water still because right. because there is no sort of here's what went wrong. We own it, and here's what we're going to do now. In addition to that, I feel like there's overlap because we don't just have one water issue. I've named it Aquageddon. I mean, that's editorializing, <laughs> but Aquageddon is what Skylar is called. Okay, we had the yeah. one water crisis, but we are past that. But then we have the water price, I mean, the water increase, water sewage increase, right. okay, and that's overlapping. So we, yeah. and then we have yet other issues, and then we have personnel replacement. So we've got all of these things that are overlapping, one not greater than the other, but they all have to do with the subject of water, and it cannot be ignored. And one thing we haven't talked about is the, is where the, the problems come from as well, and that's from the runoff from the Maumee River and the, and the watershed, which we've documented, uh, I mean, how many times in the newspaper and on this particular right. show and on our newscast. So, well, We'll put that to bed for just a minute, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about some political issues going on here, one of which is the race for governor in Ohio. Can Ed Fitzgerald resurrect his campaign, which seems, appears to be going in a difficult direction for him? Keith Burris, Skyler Meadows, come back on Take 3 in just a moment.